hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and I missed last week's Bible journaling video. Thank you to those who noticed. I had some stuff going on that week and decided to just forego it and not pressure myself to get a video done. But this week I've got one for you. I was recently driving in the countryside around where I live. We have beautiful fall trees. And I just kept thinking of Psalm 121. I look up into the hills, where does my help come from? And I decided to paint the hillsides that I saw because they were so beautiful. And this time I decided to get out some acrylics. I don't use acrylics very often, but I thought that would be fun to do in an interleave Bible, which is a Bible that has every other page blank. So the front and back of this sheet are blank, and then there's a front and back of text. And what I'm trying to do here is to build up from the back coming forward. And in the distance, it was misty. So I decided to just mix some white paint with the colors and put really light colors in the distance and then more intense and larger shapes in the front. But I'm doing it in an impressionistic style. And one of the things that I thought would be really fun is if you have a group that does Bible journaling, this would be a really great exercise to do. You can squish out a whole bunch of paper plates with some paint on them, give everybody a brush and a piece of paper, and they can just start going to town on this. And I am considering, I haven't gotten there yet, I haven't made, made the decision, but I'm considering at least doing a test run at Bible journaling with my new church, just to see if that is something that there's anybody interested in. My pastor asked if I would pray about it and I've been praying about it and I'm still, you know, there's just too much COVID around for me to feel super comfortable. So I'm kind of waiting to see how the fall and winter go and I am hoping it's all going to be just great. That would be really wonderful. And I am definitely praying for that. But in the meantime, I thought this would be a beautiful page to do. And those who are meeting in person and can do Bible journaling together. This would be a great project to work on. You could even do it on like copy paper kind of thing. And then if people are happy with their painting, they could put it into their Bible as a tip in. In this particular case, of course, I'm doing it in an interleaved Bible. So it means I don't need to actually tip it in. It's already in. It's, it's pre-tipped. But the hillsides, each one of these, not necessarily triangles, but each one of these shapes ended up being in different colors and the light was coming from the distance toward me when I was looking off into the hills. And that's really where I just got this overwhelming sense that God was just looking out at us. And one of the things that my church has been doing is adding cool features to the church app and recently added a prayer function so that you can ask for prayer and people can respond and pray together, which has just been fabulous. And in a new church where I don't know many, very many people, this is a nice way to be able to pray with others and get to know them and their needs and be able to pray for my fellow church members. So this all just kind of came together this week in my mind and this verse just needed to be painted so that each one of the hillsides, the ones on the left are going to be more desaturated and desaturated basically means they're grayer colors. They're mushier, muddier colors because they're in shadow. And the colors on the right-hand side, wherever the sun hits, are going to be more intense in color. And the hills in the distance will have smaller shapes than the ones in the very, very foreground that's really close. And the great thing about impressionistic painting like this is that I'm just making brush marks. You can see I'm not really painting trees. I'm not painting anything in particular other than going from lighter at the top of each one to darker at the bottom. And with acrylic paints, if you mess something up and you don't like how it's coming out, just add more color on top. You can wait till it dries or you can paint right on top and let those colors blend in because when they're so wet, they can mush things around. You can also paint with something like cotton balls or Q-tips if you want to. And that might be a more cost-effective way to do that with a group, but make sure you test it out at home so you have some tips to give to the people who come to your Bible study, uh, Bible journaling session. So the next hillside now is going to have more like yellows and stuff toward the top, but still on the desaturated muddy side. 
So there's one puddle of color that I keep pulling from that's mixing a brown along with a green. And that gives me that really rich kind of realistic sort of green because a straight green is just way too bright for something that I'm trying to make look natural. If you're trying to make something look realistic in color, then generally you're not going to find a pure, totally bright, crazy green out on a hillside in almost any circumstance. Even where I live in Washington state, where it's super bright and super beautiful and super green in so many places, you don't get a pure out of the tube kind of green. And especially when you're talking about inexpensive acrylics, because I don't know how many people are using fancy acrylics and have a million shades of green, but we usually have just a generic kind of green color. But if you mix that with reds or browns or oranges, you can get a color that's a little muddier, that's going to feel a little more like realistic trees. And some areas I'm adding red, some areas I'm adding orange, and I'm trying to even cluster some of them. I'm not looking to make everything uniform. I'm not looking for smooth transitions necessarily. I'm just looking for if you squint and look out over it, do you get the sense that it's trees? There's a big blob of gold paint down there that I don't actually use in this very much till I get to the very end because I was worried that the gold was going to take over everything and make it look not very realistic. So I might have something in gold coming up because while I'm recording this voiceover right now, the gold paint is drying on the plate. I would like to use that paint. So I might be, uh, yeah, doing another gold video next week or the week after or something so that I can do something tonight, re record this and use up that beautiful, gorgeous gold paint. It's a paint by Pebeo, P-E-B-E-O, and they do some really lovely uh, tubes of acrylic paint. I have just a couple of them. Even if, you know, you just want to treat yourself to something special, the Pebeo paints that are these, and I'll, I'll find a link and, and, uh, get you the, uh, the link to them. They're called Studio Acrylics High Viscosity. And I have a blue and a gold, and I just kind of dole out a little bit to my, for myself here and there to be able to use because they're not inexpensive, but this time I was squeezing the tube and a whole bunch came out. So yeah, whoops, so much for that. As I get down to the bottom section, this is the part that's closest to the viewer. So having larger shapes is gonna be important and I can have more intense colors down here as well because you're gonna see more intense colors towards you whereas you're gonna get some fog in the distance, almost some mist. Uh, painting teacher once explained it to me that there are particles in the air between you and the things in the distance and whether those particles actually add up to being a mist or something, they do dull everything that's behind them and they lighten things that are behind them because the sun hits the particles. I thought that was a helpful way to remember to lighten those colors in the far distance. So this uh, slipped a little bit down below the camera, but you'll be able to see most of the trees that I'm making, just creating some shapes that are actual tree shapes down there with some tops on them. And I'll just keep layering over top of it because I came up with some trees that I liked and some that I didn't like, but just mushing all of those colors together and making larger shapes that were more definitively trees helps to pull those to the front and leave all the other hillsides in the distance. But then I needed a little more of the darker color maybe in the, the next hillside. So it just slowly trails off into the, the distance rather than just, you know, big trees in the front one and then a big empty hillside in between. So you can keep going over this layer after layer. It's really a lot of fun to do. And it's something that I think most people can handle doing especially if you do an example ahead of time before your group and you show them how easy it is and demonstrate it for them. It's pretty easy to figure that out. You could, if you have capacity, you could play this video for them in the group. If you have a TV or you know, some sort of access to the internet where you can put this video up on a screen or something so everybody can see how easy mine is and then go create their own you are doing this and you're, uh, you're sharing your, your work online, I would love it if you would share it in the Bible journaling 
made simple Facebook group so everybody could see what you're making, see your versions of what an impressionistic hillside of trees actually looks like. For putting the text on it, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can wait till the paint dries and write over top of it with some kind of a pen. But what I decided to do was write it on a piece of paper. I trimmed the top and bottom with scissors and I just tore the left hand side. And here is the finished one. You can see just how mushy those trees are, but when you back up from it, it just looks like a beautiful, realistic hillside. All right, that's it for me this week. I will see you again next week. Well, maybe, yeah, with something in gold. We'll see if I use up that gold paint or not. Bye-bye. Take care.